Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's Church. The announcement for this week, please join us for the rosary every Wednesday at 4.15 and Stations of the Cross will be said at 4.45 p.m. All are welcome to join us for these beautiful prayers during the Lenten season. The Knights of Columbus will be having a Lenten fish fry every Friday of Lent. See the bulletin for more details. There are Easter flower envelopes at each door for donations in memory of your loved ones. Please drop the envelope in the collection basket. Father Guy Roberts will present Who is the Eucharist on March the 27th at 7 p.m. at St. Vincent Church. CCLC Linton Penance Service is Tuesday, March the 28th at 7 p.m. at St. Vincent's. See the bulletin for more details. Today's second collection is for the Catholic Relief Services. Please drop your donation in any of the black boxes at each door. And please remember to silence all cell phones. Good morning, our entrance hymn is 645, please join us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, Christ gives us the light to our soul. So we may be able to see the plan of God for our salvation. Let us ask Christ to give the grace so that we may be able to see all things with our spiritual sight. Let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse at Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, ready, a, a, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Shepherd, there is nothing I 
shall want You have prepared a table before me In the sight of my foes My head you have anointed with oil My cup is reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shame shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, 
and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we celebrate the Rejoice Sunday. We are joyful at the great feast of resurrection that we are waiting for. Yet, we are waiting with penance and fasting and prayerful life. So today, Deacon and myself were uh, Rose Westman. We don't want to call it pink, you know. But you can call it. Once a husband and wife went for a walk in the street, and the wife happened to see a beggar, and she went towards the beggar and talked to him for a while and then gave him some money. So they returned back home and the husband asked her, Honey, why did you give so much money to the beggar who was pretending to be blind? The wife said, Didn't you hear his good words to me? The husband said, no. What did he say? The wife said, he said that I was so kind, so pretty, and so young. The husband said, oh, I see. He is really blind. St. Paul writes to the people of the church in Ephesia. In his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, 14 words, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Today, we are invited to focus on our spiritual blindness than physical blindness. Indeed, there was a miracle happened. The man born blind receives not only his physical sight, but also spiritual sight by surrendering himself to Jesus as a Lord. And he worshipped him. Sometimes we are blind to what is going on on right in our midst. In a spiritual sense, we can be blind to what God is doing so well for us, like some of the people in today's gospel. And we see the Pharisees, whom the blind person who received the sight approaches them, and they were not able to accept that. Because they consider blindness 
is a sin so those who are born blind they are cursed for their sins by god so that was a prejudice they had so the pharisees were not ready to accept the man and his testimony and they call his parents the parents were not sure what was going on so they go along with the opinion of the pharisees and that's what we also do sometime we go along with the rest of the world not defending our own faith not defending our own witness to christ and even before these two groups the disciples of christ witness the great miracle of jesus restoring the sight of this blind man and the disciples were amazed and they were able to see what was going on yet they were not convinced about the miracle so they made a judgment how could this man have a sight on a sabbath day so these things were going on with the groups of people with a blind person the fourth groups of people the fourth person would be the blind person the blind man receives his sight and able to see clearly as jesus gives him the the sight through his power and he experiences the presence of god from christ so some theologians say the blind man could see more than other people could see because he had fullness of faith in christ he could see more things not only what they could see but also he could see more than what they could see because they were lacking faith in christ so in our society it happens we have a prejudice we have a prejudice that these things have to be on this way we don't want to change we don't want to accept god's intervention god's miracle sometime so we need to open our eyes and able to have a spiritual sight and see the work of god in our society and just like the pharisees we have blinded ourselves with so many materialism so many secularism that we are not able to see our spiritual sight we are not able to have a spiritual vision in our lives thus we are sinful and pride and proud and not able to see many things that god reveals in our lives so jesus is opening our sight inviting us this is what i have come to let you to see the things that nobody could see before you but i have opened your eyes of spiritual sight so you can see all things because the pharisees were blinded by their religion what happened when the pharisees were confronted with a man and they debated the fact that the man was blind at all they said jesus must must be a sinner so he cannot do a miracle and he cannot do a miracle on a sabbath day so that was their argument but jesus jesus is a lord of the sabbath and jesus is the son of god as he reveals himself personally to the blind person do you believe the son of god who restored this your sight and he said yes i do believe and he worshiped jesus at the moment when he confessed his faith to christ and that should be our way we are able to see the presence of god here we are able to hear the words of god here we are able to see the work of god here yet we are not able to accept and be convinced and be able to witness for christ yet we are not able to share our experience with someone just like the blind person was able to share i have seen christ he worked some miracles on me he gave me what i have i don't have it 
he gave me everything that i needed to so this is what his experience he went on sharing his experience with so many people even though they were not ready to accept but he went ahead and witness for christ through his words and through his action and that should be our action of faith we should witness for christ and certainly we can pray to christ help me god to see the things beyond what what i can see beyond what i have experienced in my past so that i can pray just like the blind person could pray i want to see lord I confess sorry I believe in one god tell my mind karamat karat all things are simple and visible I believe in one seeking god's divine mercy and compassion for our spiritual side let us place all our humble prayers that the church may be an inclusive place for all god's people we pray to the lord pray. that leaders may welcome the lost and forsaken we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that the differently abled may know God's love through our embrace we pray to the lord lord god that the sick and the dying may share in Christ's peace we pray to the lord lord god that the elect may be strengthened on their journey we pray to the lord lord god and for father rick who is being especially remembered at this mass we pray to the lord Lord Yahweh Heavenly Father as your son gave the sight to the blind man give us a spiritual sight to our heart so we may be able to see your divine providence and your grace in our lives we ask this through Christ our Lord
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for the goodness which the bread we are for you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for the goodness which the wine we are for you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted God Almighty Father. We place before you with, with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the mystery of the Incarnation, Christ has led the human race that walk in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts you pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and end up willingly in his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and on small giving thanks he gave it to his disciples say take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant it should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you are held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Charles Thompson our Archbishop and all the clergy remember your servant priest Father Rick whom you have called from this world to your son grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our patroness, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co has eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed the name, thy kingdom come. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set you your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, for the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with their work who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts. We pray with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ. All. We well, thank you all for participating at this match and great thanks to John Marshak for recording uh, the live streaming the match for those who are unable to come for some health reasons. It's a great blessing to have him too. And we had a spiritual uh, retreat for this Lent season uh, past Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. So you may find a paper in each pew and there's a survey and you can fill it in and you can tell us what you think and there are some questions or you can tell some stories too or if you can tell some jokes too I can take it for my homily too. So, so whatever you prefer to write that it's a great help for us to have for a future plan. You can give the uh, filled one to the ushers or to Deacon Tom or to myself. So please take a few minutes before you leave the church today. And we have penance service and next Tuesday, not coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. But before then, if you like to make confession, if you make a special time appointment, please call my cell phone number. You can call the parish uh, phone number. You can, you can get the emergency number. That's my cell phone number. You, can more, you are most welcome to call, make an appointment, or you can email me to make an appointment for a special confession that you have to make. I am happy to help you anytime for your convenience too. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The recessional hymn is 642. Please join us. Mm -hmm.